Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at this fragrance right here, Ferragamo Intense Leather. I had the bottle facing the wrong way. This uh, Intense Leather Flanker comes after just Ferragamo, and that one didn't seem to get a, a whole bunch of hype. And I gotta ask you, Ferragamo, what's going on with Womo? Are you guys killing Womo for, for this? Is that what you're doing? In this video, I'll show you the presentation, including this bottle and this box right here. I'll break this one down a little bit for you guys and let you know what I think about it and let you know whether you should check it out. So let's jump into it. First up, what do you say we go over the presentation? Starting off with the box. You've got the name of the house, the name of the fragrance, size and concentration all right there on the front. Salvatore Ferragamo up at the top. On one side, you have the note breakdown on the other side, you have a continuation of the graphic from the front. On the back, you have Salvatore Ferragamo. And on the bottom, you have your badge code and your barcode. The badge code here is a doozy. Let me go ahead and read it off for you. 21K01AR1. Don't know about you guys, but I preferred it back when badge codes were just uh, four digits. And here we have the bottle. You have across the front there, Ferragamo. And then on top of the cap also, Ferragamo. One thing that I do really like, and it's it's kind of minor, but I really dig it, is the feel of the leather. So where it says Ferragamo and also on the cap, it has a leathery feel and it's really smooth to the touch. <laughs> it's such a minor thing, but when I pick the bottle up, I'm like, that feels pretty good. Don't judge me. On the side, you've got nothing. On the other side, you've got nothing. On the back, you've got nothing. And then on the bottom, you have a sticker with your batch code. Cap does click into place, and you kind of need to, to fit it into this little spot right here. It's in the shape of the cap, of course, so you get it right in there. And let me go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys. The atomizer is pretty good. There we go. And I'll go ahead and read you guys the note breakdown since it's right here on the side of the box. You have contrasted radiance in the top, which is mandarin orange, pink pepper, and clary sage. You have intimate authenticity in the mid, which is an apple accord, lily of the valley, and orris. And then in the base, which is the seductive journey, of course, you have oak moss, ferragamo intense leather accord, and musks. And you gotta love that. Yeah, never stop selling ferragamo. This one has contrasted radiance, intimate authenticity, and a seductive journey. Top middle base, that's for peasants. This fragrance I've been testing and wearing off and on for probably a solid month now. And it's kind of weird because I can't quite make up my mind on it. Sometimes I think that it's really solid and other times I think this is boring and I hate it. And I flip flop between those. That may not make a whole lot of sense, but I'll try to explain it as we go. When you first spray this on, you get some mandarin orange, you get some apple, so you've got this nice fruity sweetness right away. The clary sage you pick up also, and it smells almost like, um, like leaves that have been that have been like rubbed or crushed slightly and that's just around the edges it's mainly the fruitiness just this sort of green slight green feel on the periphery and then you have this earthiness that is the base of the fragrance in the opening but it's like a fresh clean earthiness uh, that might not make a whole bunch of sense but when you smell it you'll understand what i'm talking about it has this slight smell of dirt, but <laughs> in a really clean way, if dirt can be clean. Uh, I know this fragrance is called Intense Leather, so you're thinking, oh man, we're in for a whole bunch of leather. Not really, uh, at least initially, but as it dries down a little bit, that leather does start to come out more, and then that, that sort of clean earthiness that you smell initially, that dips out. So it's kind of like they switch places. The leather comes in, that earthiness goes away. I know that iris is one of the main things here. Iris, or as it said on the side, an oris accord, but I never pick up a whole lot of it. I get a little bit as it goes through the mid. It's got a slight powderiness to it. Uh, not really what I would call soapy, but there's, there's a little bit. Not a whole ton, but a little bit. When you hit the dry down, that leather, it's still there. It's not as, uh, not as an impactful leather, as it is in the opening and the mid, at least once that earthiness dries down and you can pick the leather up anyway. That little bit of virus that you pick up, that stays through to the dry down. So you get this little 
little floral feel from the iris and the dry down. Still stays pretty sweet pretty much the whole way through, though uh, much sweeter initially than once you hit the dry down. Now this one, I've seen people compare to ombre leather from Tom Ford. Uh, I've seen people compare it to a number of different blue fragrances, just a, a, lot of, a lot of different things. Now, when I spray this on, I don't smell ombre leather. So if I put those side by side, don't think they're really that close. I think the leather that does come out in this, especially as it heads into the mid and through the mid, you could maybe draw a comparison to the leather accord that's in ombre leather, but just like the fragrances themselves, they're different, pretty different. Now the leather that does come out in this, you know, once it heads into the mid and through the mid, that leather accord, maybe you could hold up and say, yeah, it's a little bit close to that leather accord in ombre leather, but all the other things around that leather accord are very different in here versus that one. <laughs> I'm pointing over there because that's, that's where I've got it. Uh, but yeah, the fragrances themselves, they're, they're different. This is, at the end of the day, very much a blue fragrance. It's made for maximum versatility, maximum appeal. It's made for compliments. It's made for nobody to find it offensive or off-putting. That's what this is. This is Ferragamo, you know, dipping their toes more and more and more into the, the blue fragrance side of things. Now, let's talk, I guess, about the parts that I don't like. I don't like this sort of synthetic sweetness that it has from the apple especially that just really through the opening and most of the mid jumps off my skin like i sprayed it on right here not very long ago and it's just boom every time i smell it this this red apple is like punches me in the face and yeah there's there's a little mandarin orange, a little clary sage, which is trying to give this sort of contrast to that sweetness, but it doesn't really work. You know, the sweetness is here, for me anyway, and everything else is kind of here. So I don't really like that a lot. Now it grew on me more as I wore it more, but it's still something that when I smell it sometimes, especially up close, I go, oh man, that needs to be just dialed down a bit. Once it does tone down, it's a lot better, a lot smoother, a lot more rounded. And that's my favorite part, which is, I'd say about halfway through the mid into the dry down. It smooths out, gets a lot better, smells a lot classier, a lot more refined. I really dig that part. It's just, they went so hard, like balls to the wall with that, that kind of opening to grab your attention that for me personally, just doesn't work. But I know for other people, it would. My wife thinks it smells basic. I had her smell it in the opening, the mid, the dry down, you know the drill, just randomly ambushing her, you know, coming out like, hey, what's this smell like? <laughs> well, actually, that looks like I punched her in the face. It's more like, hey, what's this smell like? And she's not a huge fan, just thinks it smells basic. And I don't think that's wrong, actually. It, it doesn't smell to me like anything super unique. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's taking stuff that's been done, you know, bits from here, bits from there. You can smell bits from other blue fragrances. You can smell, for example, that leather that smells like they lifted part of that from ombre leather, again, by Tom Ford. And they just kind of, you know, melded it all together. I don't think it's bad. I do think it's pleasant. I like the mid, I like the dry down, the opening, kind of wishy-washy on the opening. I would probably give like a five or six out of 10, something like that. It's not offensive, it's just not really doing it for me, especially when you put it up against some of its competitors in the, the blue fragrance realm. My opinion is once this hits discounters, and you can pick it up about 40 bucks, maybe less, then it's a really good buy for a ton of people out there. About 40 bucks or under. At retail, for me, I would pass. There are so many fragrances better that you can get for less at discounters. So that's what I think. I think 40 bucks and under, you're golden. You can use it a bunch of times, bunch of situations, 40 to 50, that's the high end. Anything above that, wait. Really quickly, let's just run through uh, seasons, all that stuff, as far as daytime or nighttime either. The leather does make it wear. You can pull this off during the night just as easily as during the day. Uh, as far as seasons, spring, summer, fall, that's what I'd go for. Performance, as far as longevity goes, it's good, seven plus hours. As far as projection goes, the more moderate, first hour, hour and a half when you've got that, that sweetness really pumping off your skin, pretty strong. 
After it settles in though, uh, it's more of a personal scent cloud. So there we go, Ferragamo, intense leather. It is a solid fragrance. I don't like the opening as much as the dry down. I think that you need to find this for under 50 bucks, then you're gonna be good. It is very versatile though. It is a potential complement puller. Not the most complex thing on earth. It is a little bit, uh, as my wife said, basic, but nice. Do I like this line so far better than the Womo line? No, not close, not close. The Ferragamo Womo line, I think is much, much, much superior to this. That being said, I'm partial to that type of fragrance, that fall and winter time sweet kind of sexy fragrance. I like that. Uh, fresher fragrances a lot of times are a little bit boring to me unless they're really nice. So here we go, Ferragamo Intense Leather. For me, good, not great. So that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you smelled it, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Is that what Jerry Springer used to say? I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video.